Hello everyone! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today, you're going to be learning about terraforming in vanilla Valheim. One of the first things you'll get in Valheim is the hoe. To get started using the hoe, you'll need to make a workbench that is covered. Once you have the hoe, there'll be a couple options available. Let's start with the most common one, which is level ground. As you saw there, level ground flattens the ground. You can use level ground to do some terrain changing completely for free. This is the primary means that you have as a player to do terraforming in Valheim. But you'll find that there's some limitations. As you can see, you can only flatten a certain amount, and it's not actually that much, okay? And in the same way, you can also only raise ground a certain amount, and it's not actually that much. That's because using the hoe is completely free, aside from your stamina cost. Another paving option people like to use is the cultivator. You can actually use it in a very similar way, and in some situations, it'll do a better job of flattening the terrain. It also creates a much more noticeable dark path. Personally, I like the look of the cultivator paths more than the dirt paths. And you can also use the grassing method to thin out the path, which results in a more natural looking kind of trail. The main advantage of using the cultivator is that it handles the steep terrain much better. As you can see, we were able to just fill that up really easily. It's also completely free, which is another great benefit. You're going to learn that there's multiple limits depending on the kind of tool that you're using. Now that we know that there is an upper and a lower limit, let's use this knowledge to create an effective path up this slope. We learned earlier that if we go up a hill, we're going to cut into it. Where if we go down a hill, we're going to raise the ground. In this case, I want to cut into the hill to start, because this is usually how you'll find an elevated spot. You can just kind of ride the hill, right? And you're going to very quickly notice that limit. If you try and go forward too far, the dirt is not going to show up. And this is actually really important, because this is your angle to travel up mountains and slopes, okay? So what you're going to do is try and look up but kind of ride that angle as best you can without going too far until you get to the very top, okay? So this is the first pass. We've cut the swath, but obviously this isn't a good path. So what you can do now is do another pass, but depending on the direction you start the pass, it's going to change the look and style of the path, okay? So let's actually run to the bottom because we want to kind of add to the path, not cut out of it, okay? So I'm not going to do the same thing. I'm not going to look here. Instead, I'm going to look behind me, okay? And we're going to start kind of raising the ground behind us a little bit, matching this same angle from earlier, okay? And this is going to help us flatten out the path and make it feel more legit. So all you have to do is just go up here once, right? And then look at that. We already have a better formed path. After you pass over it twice, you can go over and then do a little bit of touch up based on what you've learned. But you have to be careful. Once you have a decent kind of slope, you might just want to stop at that. Because if you start trying to mess with it too much, you're going to find that you might spend hours and hours and hours trying to flatten out this kind of thing. And it becomes a huge mess. Have you ever wanted to get your own Valheim server? Well, if you've been thinking about getting a dedicated Valheim server, then why not use my sponsor, Zap Hosting? I've also got tutorials that show you how to set up Expand World prefabs, how to script, and how to make a vanilla-friendly custom version of Valheim that your friends can join on vanilla clients. So if you want to learn about that, check it out. Let's do it one more time on another slope so that you get a good sense of it. It's simple, but important to understand. Here we are with another classic terrain area, and what we want to do is run a path up there, right? Start from the lower elevation and cut into the hill with the hoe until you see the dirt. The dirt shows you the angle you need to take. So look a little bit to the left of the dirt, looking up, and then just kind of travel diagonally along this ridge, making sure that you never break the path, okay? You don't want to see this. 
You want the brown. Not this, the brown. All right? And here you can see that there's obstacles. Honestly, you're better off just clearing things than trying to make the path wrap around it, okay? But I'm just gonna keep going. You'll find that you won't be able to get up these steep hills very quickly. You have to really have that angle right and then just keep going and eventually you'll meet some kind of ground, right? So now we see we have a much longer one. Let's run down it here. This one looks pretty solid, but we can see we have a problem right there. Look at that. Before you do your second pass, you wanna make sure that the whole first pass is one continuous line. I cleared the rocks and we can see we have that situation again. So let's kind of try and even it out. We're just gonna look in the middle there. That looks pretty good. Now we have our continuous path all the way down the ridge line. So we go back to the bottom, turn around. See that line that gets quite big? You want it to be kind of as big as you can get it, okay? And then you walk back up the path, looking behind you and a little bit to the left, okay? This is gonna ensure that you're making something that's easier to flatten. So let's just keep going. And there we go, we now have our path line. Now, I know that this doesn't look too crazy, right? It's just a path, but you could get a cart down it, and we didn't spend hours doing it. Don't underestimate how frustrating it is to try and get the hoe to work exactly how you want it if you didn't put these things in the right place. It is incredibly infuriating, and you end up doing a whole bunch of this kind of nonsense. So I'm trying to save you from that fate, okay? That's why I encourage you to use this double pass method that I just showed you. But using the hoe for free has its limits. You're not going to be able to raise or lower the ground more than a meter or two, and that's gonna create a problem. We were able to work around that with this path from earlier because we're taking advantage of the maximum above and the maximum below, which essentially doubles the difference you have to use. And that brings us to raising the ground. Should you find yourself well endowed with stones and in possession of a wonderful state-of-the-art workbench that is also nearby, you'll be able to raise the ground. Let's grab some of our stones here. And now we've activated the raise ground ability. As you can see, it has a little bit of a different reticle here. And if we just place it, oh, it makes like a raised square of ground. When you first start raising ground, you'll probably do something like this. You'll use it a couple times to make some kind of rock pillar, right? And if you keep raising the ground, you'll eventually find that you simply can't raise it anymore. So the raising ground also has a limit above the default terrain height. It's just a lot larger than the limit you encounter while using the hoe. And that's why the raised ground has a resource cost of two stone. What's interesting about raising the ground is it actually changes that limit that you experienced on the hoe. If we take this raised ground pillar here and we try and level it, for example, we can see that we can't actually level it back down to default height, but by trying to level it, we did lower the top of it by a little bit. This is quite useful if you find that the hoe isn't able to patch an area. For example, let's say we wanna flatten the top of this hill out. It might work perfectly fine if you stay within reasonable limits, but as you go down elevation, you're gonna find that your hoe just doesn't cut it anymore with the level ground. This is where you can add some raised ground in, and you wanna overdo it a little bit. So let's add a little bit more raised ground than we think we need, okay? There we go. And now I'm just gonna go over it with the hoe, making sure that I'm standing on the level area, right? As you can see, now that we raised the ground and then flattened it with the hoe, it extends further out and stays more flat. It doesn't go down the hill like it was going before. Next, we'll move on to using pickaxes. But before we put the hoe behind us, let's take a look at Pathan and Paved Road. Pathan is very simple. Unlike the hoe, which levels the area and paints it with dirt, Pathan just paints it with dirt. It doesn't level it as you see here. So you can still see the kind of original terrain shape of the hill. This is good if you don't want to use the leveling feature and you're just trying to get that dirt to be in a smaller area. Pathan is perfect for that. Next, we'll move on to the paved road, which requires a stone cutter nearby. 
Once you get into the Iron Age and you have some stone, you'll be able to start making some paved road. Paved road is essentially the same thing as leveled ground, except it raises the ground a teeny bit more, and it has this cobblestone texture, as you can see here. Working with the paved road tool is almost identical to when you're using the hoe. You're gonna wanna use the same strategies, where if you look into the hill, you'll cut down into it, but if you look behind you, you'll raise the ground even more. One thing that I find to be useful with the paved road is to use the cultivator and the grassing to actually make smaller roads, okay? So we've placed our first wave. Now let's do pretty much the same thing as before. We're gonna widen the path by doing the same thing, but going the other way here. And we end up with something that looks too wide, right? So now what we do is we use the grass tool and we kind of add a little bit of variety, follow the terrain, and just grass over. And that's just a simple way that you can make these paved roads that look pretty nice. That combination of the grass and the thinner path is often all that you need to get a nice visual look in your cobblestone path. And in general, when you make a path, you have to think about, is it for a player or is it for carts? Because if it's for carts, you can't be steep and you gotta be wide. Keep those things in mind as you terraform your paths in Valheim. A player could easily get up something like this, but someone with a cart full of metal doesn't have a chance. Whereas with a switchback style path like this, there's a pretty solid chance that they're gonna make it all the way up even with a cart full of metal. Now we can move on to the final terraforming tool that players have available, the pickaxe. This is a mighty iron pickaxe, but all the pickaxes function exactly the same when it comes to the terrain. There's no difference, so don't worry about it. Remember that tower we made earlier and we hit a limit of how high we could go? Well, the pickaxe is essentially the same thing except the opposite. All right, so if we just keep digging, we'll eventually get to a point where we simply can't dig any deeper. And if we zoom out and I clip the camera into the terrain because of a mod, you can see that we basically have the same thing as before, except it's inverted. This is the one underground, and here's the one above ground. That being said, there are some unique differences with the pickaxe that you should know about. Let's imagine that you want to dig a deep pit. I don't know why you want to, but let's say that you do. A beginning player will do it like this. They'll just keep going down from the top, right? But as you can see, this is actually quite time consuming and it takes a while before you get to that bottom limit. There's actually a faster way to do it. Instead of digging down again in a different place, go to the limit in a hole you already made and then just hit the sides of the wall. You're gonna notice that if you hit it three times, you end up moving the whole thing forward. So let's move forward again. One, two, three. And what do we have? The whole thing moved forward. So we're now riding along this lower limit and it only takes us three hits. We move forward, three hits, we move forward, etc., etc., etc. This is the fastest way to dig using the three hit method once you're already at the limit. For the actual player, this is all they can do. They can dig deep holes with the pickaxe, they can raise ground with the hoe, they can make paths with paved road, and they can use the cultivator to create grass. It won't actually always be grass. Sometimes it'll be beach, sand, or whatever the biome has put in that location. You've now learned all of the possible things that a player can do in Vanilla Valheim. But believe it or not, there is actually one more thing that most people don't know about. And because you made it to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. The catch though, is this is something you have to use dev commands to spawn. As you can imagine, flattening out a big area and getting it to be exactly how you want is a very time consuming process. Often taking players a whole session in itself. Let's find a nice open spot, something like this that hasn't been touched yet. And we're gonna type location and then dev ground to and then save, all right? Boom, look at that. We just made this giant flat development ground immediately in vanilla Valheim. Did you know you could do that? Pretty cool, right? Now let's look at this command real quick because there's a reason that it has this save thing and it's important that I explain how this works to you. 
Let's go to a different spot and then use the command without save. As you can see, it says world saving disabled. That means that if I just exit, nothing's gonna get saved. So this is something important to keep in mind. If you want the game to function normally after you spawn this, you have to put this save parameter afterwards, all right? It'll flatten everything out in a large perfect circle. So some people like to ask their server admins to spawn one of these or something like that so that they don't have to spend all the time making a nice big flat area themselves. They can just find the spot and then send a screenshot of it to their admin, something like that. Now, let's do a little experiment. What do you think happens if I try and spawn one of these in the bottom of this pit? I don't know, let's see. Location, dev, ground, two, and then save. Boom, oof, what happened? It looks like I fell. <laughs> Look at that. It did actually inset the whole area down. Isn't that crazy? But as you can see, it still tries to kind of remember the terrain changes that you had made to it. So it looks like it's best to use this dev ground thing in an area that's completely untouched. An area like this would probably be perfect. So there you go, you now know, eh, oh, wait, nope, there's one more way that you can adjust terrain in Vanilla Valheim. Actually, to be honest, there's a couple different ways. But as you can see, I'm going to show you the catapult, and that's going to help you understand how all the other ways work. There's a couple things in Valheim that actually explode and create craters. So let's load up this siege bomb here. There's one, two, and three. Let's go see the crater. <laughs> It definitely makes a crater, right? As you can see, you can pit things with the siege bombs. But obviously, actually using this in the exact way that you want, that's not going to happen. So more often than not, these are actually going to get in your way. Just be cautious when you're using the catapult, because sometimes people do that and then they don't realize that it happens. You'll also find something similar with these lava blob mobs in the Ashlands. They jump around and then they explode. And then they end up leaving a light crater in the terrain. And then there's the unstable lava rock, which is also something that explodes and leaves a crater. Congratulations, you've now learned all the possible ways that one can terraform in Vanilla Valheim. Now, I will admit, terraforming in Vanilla Valheim is a huge pain. So if you're managing a server or doing anything like that, I strongly encourage you to use a tool like Infinity Hammer. Got a bunch of videos about that that you can check out, but it really helps speed this whole process up exponentially so. If you want to support my work and also try out a new Valheim experience, then consider trying out my Valheim Overhaul Enigma Mode. Enigma Mode is a new way to play Valheim that is completely vanilla friendly. That means that you can install this mod pack and invite your friends on their vanilla clients or on their Xbox or soon to be PlayStation got lots of content all about it and I also run a bi-weekly development live stream that shows people what I'm currently working on and what's coming up and if you want to support my work on enigma mode then I have a patreon that you can contribute to if you want to motivate me this is something that people who really enjoy enigma mode have been doing and it is really incredible that people actually want to give me money to work on this project it's shown me that other people actually do want me to do game development and that's been a really great thing in my life. So thank you all who support me on Patreon. Also, thanks to any of you who just watch YouTube videos, you like, you subscribe, anything you do, really. I appreciate it. It's awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.